Welcome into the August 25th edition of the Locked On These Podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. And on today's show, we'll take a look at the betting market for the Toronto Maple Leafs and see where the Bet Online Sportsbook has Toronto and its players positioned in the uh, statistical and awards categories. Uh, so, that and more coming up on today's show. This is the Locked On These Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast. Who wants to stop shop for all things Leafs? I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs, the daily Maple Leafs set your podcast. So be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also now catch us up on video on YouTube. Search up Locked On Leafs on YouTube. Hit subscribe. Uh, if you haven't already, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. All right, Dave, it's uh, we're less than a month away from training camp starting up, and the betting line's already starting to filter out. BetOnline.net just released uh, their most recent futures lines and wagers that you can make. And uh, why don't we take a peek at what's going on with Toronto and what uh, the Maple Leafs betting future looks like according to the bet online sports book and i suppose we would just start with the stanley cup odds um and the stanley cup odds has toronto with the fourth shortest odds which a lot of books early on had them as like the second shortest odds maybe some tied for second third but for the shortest odds they're starting to shorten a little bit it was as high as 750 on some books earlier in the year or 900 earlier in the year. It's now plus 1100. So uh, maybe not a lot of wagers coming down on the Toronto Maple Leafs at betonline.net. And, you know, their odds are starting to fall a little bit. Uh, but fourth best odds to win the Stanley Cup, would you say that's rather accurate, Dave? Yeah, I was, I was debating this and like, it probably makes sense given that they rel- are relatively the same roster minus the goaltending for the most part. So like you're kind of hoping and, and they've always been near the top five, top 10 of like Stanley cup odds. So yeah, that didn't really surprise me all too much when it comes to like the Stanley cup favorites, because I mean, Tampa Bay, you know, they're going to be right there. I'm a little surprised again about Florida. Like, yeah, not- so the, the teams ahead of Toronto, I guess we should probably say that Colorado's favorite at plus 375, Florida at uh, plus 1000 is second, Tampa at plus 1100. I technically Tampa and the Leafs actually are tied, so I guess you could also say Toronto is the third shortest odds, but um, tied at plus 1100. Yeah, like that, I'm not surprised that like Tampa would be ahead of them. I'm a little surprised that Florida is ahead just because of what they went through this offseason, the how many guys they've lost this offseason. Yeah. Um, I guess a lot of people are ba- are banking on Florida to have a bounce back or the Matthew Kachuk trade is enough for people to wager those down. Then you I mean, I looked at the teams after you got Carolina at plus twelve hundred, Edmonton at plus twelve hundred, Calgary is at plus sixteen hundred, and then the Rangers at plus eighteen hundred. Like those, the, like those aren't surprising to me because I do think a the Leafs are the top Canadian NHL team when it comes to Stanley Cup odds. Maybe you can make a case for Calgary to be in conversation. Actually, maybe Calgary at plus sixteen hundred might be a little bit might might not be too. Right. Yeah, it's not too bad there, but um, yeah, I think the Leafs are properly slotted when you consider all the teams that they are ahead of. I think it's tough to argue certain teams would be like. I don't see the LA Kings being ahead of the Leafs as a no. Stanley Cup contender. No. Like, though, if like you look at the teams that are behind, like realistically, if you're trying to be level headed, even if you take the fan part out of, it, if you're trying to argue all oh, the Leafs are too high, who would you put ahead of the Leafs in the odds? Realistically, Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, Carolina is probably the I only one. Carolina. 
and they're just and they're right. It's not like the Leafs are overwhelming me ahead. They're all, like it's literally Leafs are plus eleven hundred, Carolina's plus twelve hundred. It's very slim. Yeah, yeah, no, completely agree with you there. Um, maybe the Rangers just because of Igor Shosturkin could be a nice little play there at plus eighteen hundred. Like their odds are are pretty long there, eighteen to one. Um, but yeah, Toronto at eleven to one. Third, fourth best odds. Like it's not a, a bet that I'm making in the summer. That's for sure. I don't think that uh, that's appetizing enough for me to make that wager. Carolina at twelve hundred. I think that number could shorten for sure, as you know they have a hot start to the season. I think they're going to be a very good team. Um, just signed Paul Stastny actually today to uh, a nice little one year, one and a half million dollar contract. Tidy piece of business for the Hurricanes. A guy who I really wanted Toronto to get, and considering he signed for so cheap does make me a little upset that uh, they weren't able to get it done with, with Stasny, but say la vie is what it is. He's now a Carolina hurricane. And yeah, I think uh, they right now would be the value play that would be worth making a wager on at bet online. Um, not the Maple Leafs as it stands, but if you want to bet on some other Maple Leafs content, there certainly is some other stuff that you can make wagers on uh, for sure. So let's take a look at the regular season point totals for uh for the maple leaves and bet online has the regular season point total set the over under is 107.5 they obliterated this number last year do you expect them to get over this number again or do you think that there will be a little or quite there would be quite a bit of regression if they end up doing this there would be that have to be what four yeah, it was eight, they 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 finished with 115 losses. points. Yeah, so there would have to be four losses, four more losses on this on the record of the Maple Leafs this season since last year. Um, but over under 107 and a half. Technically, if they do hit the over here, it still would be the second best season in Maple Leafs history. So it is still a really high number, and we have talked about a lot this year how um, that division has gotten a lot tighter. It's going to be much more difficult to get points off your division whom you play more than any other team in the NHL. Um, that being said though, Dave, where do you lean? Do you, do you think they can go over that number for a second consecutive season? Or is this a, a team that's going to be scrapping and clawing and finish with under 107 points? Like I, I personally think the Leafs left games. Like they, there was a lot left on the bone there. When you consider some of the games that they lost last year, the goaltending wasn't that good. So people are going to say, oh, the goaltending is not going to be good. So that means the Leafs are going to drop a few more games. The goaltending wasn't great last year at, in the regular season. So that's why I think one of those, even if they lose, let's say, three games, that still puts them over 107.5 points. So that's why I think the over could, would be a good play here. It's funny that the Leafs, well, maybe it's not because Tampa did finish below them. The Saints Tampa's at one Oh three point five for their points total. So the Leafs are favored by four more points. So I, I don't think that's terrible value for, for the Leafs there in terms of point totals. I think Here's you have to really decide is the, is the goaltending going to be that brutal that they could lo- drop that many points. It could very well be the possibility that way. If you're, if you're, if your mind thinks that way remember we bet with this not with this i'm pointing to my brain and not my heart (laughs) because i've learned that lesson that's the first lesson i learned when it comes to putting on wagers then if your brain's telling you that the leaves are going to be absolutely brutal hit the under on that point still and then you'll have no reason to complain funny enough panthers over under set at 105 and a half so for some reason um the main or the bet the odds makers high on Florida and Tampa higher on Florida and Tampa to win the cup, but you know, still think the Maple Leafs, who are a dominant regular season team, still have them dominating in the regular season and uh, have them as the highest. Would that be the highest projected over under point total actually? Um, among all teams, it looks like it potentially could be 107 and a half. Let's see where Colorado is at 111 point five. Okay, so Colorado, 111.5. But outside of them, I think that's the second highest projected total. Yeah. Yep. I'm not. Yeah, because Edmonton's not that high. Yeah, Colorado. And that's funny because it's 
So that means it's pretty much Colorado than the Leafs. Yeah. That's 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 really interesting, but I think that just speaks to how the the betting lines feel about the Leafs as a regular season team. Uh yeah, they they always perform in the regular season. It's the postseason where they got to got to start picking it up and get going. BetOnline.net has the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NHL, NBA, combat sports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They got you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action. Bet online, it's where the game starts. All right, let's see where we can, uh, where the Maple Leafs are at in terms of player futures. So, um, the Hart Trophy, which was won by Austin Matthews a year ago, not coming in as the favorite, which shouldn't surprise you. Connor McDavid is the favorite to uh, take his crown back as uh, as the Hart Trophy winner. Um, he's favored at plus two sixty. But Austin Matthews, plus 500, second shortest odds to uh, win MVP. That's not a bad bet. That's not a terrible bet. No. Uh, five to one. And the only thing is, like, I, I probably would find somewhere else to put my money, like, technically. But at five to one, I think it's very much possible that Matthews could do it again. Yeah, it's no, it is very possible. It's it's tough to do in the NHL to win back to back hearts, but Austin Matthews got a nice little boost from all the talk about him being a heart candidate. That never really that doesn't hurt your candidacy at all. So yeah, plus five hundred isn't bad. Uh, I'm just debating: is there somebody lower that has like better? Uh, I mean, really, it's Connor McDavid that you have to always beat out. That's like the measuring stick. And if Connor McDavid is healthy, that's a big one for him. He'll likely remain in that conversation all year long, and that's going to make it tough for any any player, even Austin Matthews, to go over. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's pretty. This five to one is not bad, but yeah, I think you might shop around a little bit to just see if where other odds makers have him in the ballot race. Mitch Marner twenty eight to one. I don't know if people would ever give Mitch Marner. On a team with Austin Matthews, it'll always be Austin Matthews ahead of Mitch Marner, I believe. Yeah, it's just you know nice to see him getting a little bit of respect, at least being ranked amongst the top players out there. Like he's smack dab in the middle of the odds of Igor Shosturkin and and uh, and Alex Ovechkin. So you know that's how high odds makers think uh, Mitch Marner is going to be a valuable piece of the puzzle this season for the Toronto Maple Leafs, which is expected. John Tavares. Plus sixty six hundred in between Kyle Connor and Jason Robertson, tied with them actually. Actually, it was just a massive like twelve way to tie at sixty six to one. Braden Point, Pedersen, Gensel, Connor, Tavares, Robertson, Kreider, Kadri. Yeah, there's a bunch of bunch of guys who are sixty six to one to win the odds, and I would put Tavares not in the category of those players, to be quite honest with you. But uh, that's where BetOnline.net has them. If I was to make a futures wager on Austin Matthews, though, I don't think I'd waste my money on Matthews plus 500 or 5 to 1, uh, rather. Um, well, it's the same thing, but uh, to win the heart. If anything, if I'm going to put my money somewhere for my future dollars on Austin Matthews, something that has a little bit more uh, likelihood of him winning, it, it would be the Rocket Richard Trophy at plus 250. So two and a half to one. Um, so you, you put down 10 bucks to win 25. Or put down a hundred, win yourself two hundred fifty bucks, uh, and that is something that is he's far more likely to win because that doesn't come down to chance and that doesn't come down to narrative and storyline like the Hart Trophy does, a very subjective trophy. This comes down to who scores the most goals, and well, the last couple of years and since he's come into the NHL, it's been Austin Matthews and nobody else. Uh, so. Yeah, Matthews is the guy who I would definitely be placing a wager on right now at plus 250. Like, because it's so early in the year, you'll get him at plus money. But pretty early into the season, you're not going to find him at plus money. So that is a wager that I consider making rather early because there's a good chance that uh, that is definitely going to pay off for you 
later on down the line. Uh, let's take a look at the Norris Trophy and see if there's any Maple Leafs in the Norris Trophy uh, odds. I don't expect anybody to win it, but uh, as expected, Kill McCarr comes in as the odds-on favorite at plus 150. So, you know, there, <laughs> so there are better a better chance of somebody beating Austin Matthews for the Rocket apparently than someone beating Kill McCarr to win the Norris this season. That's what Bet Online is telling us based on their odds. Um, you have to keep scrolling down pretty far to get to Morgan Riley, who is uh, at thirty-three to one to win the um, the Norris Trophy this season as the top Maple Leafs a candidate on the betting board. And I don't think there's another one out here. There, no. I don't even think there should be, anyways. Um, and even uh, <laughs> no offense to Morgan Riley. But that would be a waste of money if you put money on Morgan Riley to win the Norse. I just don't see it happening. It's a four, five man race, and it's going to be for a long time. Uh, and Riley's just not in that class. Just not. I like Victor Hedman at plus eight hundred, eight to one. Yeah, that's he's always in that conversation. I think really it's because Kale McCarr and Roman Yossi put up so many points, but. Victor Hedman had a very underrated season last year. Well, most side are 20 to one. That's if you believe that, if you believe that the current, I don't want to upset me, the Calder trophy winner and now potential future <laughs> Norris fake, trophy winner. Fake news, fake news. He's not the Calder trophy winner on this show. You know that Dave. but <laughs> the fake Calder trophy winner, most cider. Yes. Uh, that's uh, that's not terrible odds at twenty to one if uh, the hype around him continues and if yeah. it's just right now he's not of the snuff offensively as they kill McCarr and Roman Yossi that puts him a little further back. I was thinking McAvoy and then I remembered that he's going to miss the first like six to eight weeks yeah. of the season and you're not going to win a, an award if you're missing six to eight weeks to start a year and then you'll take a couple of weeks to get you know, back into the swing of things. No so I think McAvoy, who technically has the, what, fifth, sixth shortest odds to win it, not a safe bet. Good, mm-hmm. decent odds at 14 to 1, but not something that I think uh, he'll end up winning based on the the injury there to start the year for him. So, yeah, not much to wager on in, in a Maple Leafs perspective when it comes to uh, the Norris, and definitely nothing to put money on with the Vesna Trophy. Um, do they even have odds for him to win the Vez- for any of these goaltenders to win the Vesna? They do actually. Matt Murray, thirty three, three to one. one. That is much higher than it should be. Much higher, shorter, I suppose, than it should be. Like he's in the category of Jordan Bennington. Him and Jordan Bennington have the are tied for the same odds to win the Vesna this season. I don't understand why that's the case for Matt Murray. Don't understand it. It's it's the Leafs effect, man. He's got a worse. Hold on, he has higher, better odds than John Gibson, Jeremy Swayman, Cam Talbot. Probably the only names that uh, make a lot of sense to, to yeah. talk about there. But that's like four guys who are below him and have better odds, longer odds than Matt Murray. That's certainly should not be below him. So a little bit of value, I suppose, in guys like that, potentially. Um, but uh, at 33 to 1, yeah, that would be lighting money on fire, depending on Matt Murray there. Yeah, the Leafs, as we said, the Leafs don't need Vezina caliber goaltending for Matt Murray. Nor are they, should they really be expecting it. No. But they should be expecting that he will be better than some of the guys that are certainly below him on the list. Like good old Peter Mrazek at 100 to 1. You want to talk about lighting money on fire? What's the next best thing to lighting money on fire? Like just, just want, just don't even, just they like take the money that you that you're gonna bet and just wiping your ass with it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I waste. As somebody once said to me, "Why waste the match?" Yeah, exactly. Why even waste the match? Uh, Jack Campbell, twenty eight to one odds to win it. To, uh, now a goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers. I kind of like Jake Ottinger at 20 to 1. I kind of like those odds. He was outstanding in the playoffs for the Dallas Stars. If he can continue that type of play into like this season, his first 
would be his first full season as like the guy, the starter in Dallas. I think there's a chance that uh, twenty to one isn't terrible odds. It's not right. terrible odds for him. Just, Demko plus sixteen hundred. Marsham, Marsham plus fourteen hundred. I like uh, I like a couple of long shots here when it comes to the Vesna, but when it comes to Maple Leafs and the Vesna, I don't like at all. Not one bit. Not one bit at all. Um, I think that's it in terms of uh, anything else that we have here in terms of uh, NHL and Maple Leaf stuff. What is there to make the playoffs? There's a. I'm curious what the no would be for Toronto. It's Actually, probably- you look at the division. The Atlantic Division has the actually has it's funny. Panthers have the lower points totals, but they are favored to win the division at plus two hundred. It's only slim because the Leafs are at plus two ten, then Tampa at plus two seventy. Okay. That's how close people are expecting this Atlantic Division race because the top three are that close to each other in the odds. It's so tough. To, like that's why I don't bet on the Atlantic Division because that's just going to be way too unpredictable, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, it, it this top three could end up in any which way. It really, really could. Toronto can end up on top. So could Tampa. <clears throat> so could Florida. Um, and the odds clearly reflecting that, uh, with all three of them being relatively the same. Uh, but Florida, it, like I don't understand. How do you possibly have Florida? with the best odds to win the division yet in your team totals, you have the Maple Leafs (laughs) up at top. So this is an example of if you wanted to make a wager, instead of wagering the over under for totals, um, maybe you're actually better off. If you think Toronto goes over that 107 and a half point mark should be good enough to win the division. If they do go over. Yeah. More value on the Maple Leafs to win the, the division at plus 210 than over under, which is a 50 50 shot basically at minus uh, 120, I think it was. So you're yeah. actually getting, you know, two to one odds as opposed to paying 20 cents on the dollar to get your odds for just a 50 50 chance at the over under. It actually might be smarter to just make the wager on them winning the division um, as opposed to making a play on the total. No, I think that's that makes in terms of making money, it's the it's probably the better bet. Whether it's a safer bet, that's just depending on whether you think Florida and Tampa are just not going to be up to like up to the least level. And those points totals do hold true at the end of the season. Right. Right. Well, we got a whole season ahead of us to uh keep track of all these bets and I know It'll be a week into it, and these lines will start moving and shaking. And, and, and I mean, they'll probably start moving as we even get closer and closer to uh, to puck drop, where more money starts to come pouring in, and it'll change all the betting lines. So you can keep track uh, of what's going on over at BetOnline.net. You can make your wagers today at BetOnline. Uh, that's going to do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On These Podcasts on all podcast platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morisuti. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a like and a comment down below. Really helps with the algorithm too. Um, let us know because we do. Uh, we got to know what we can do, Dave. We're going to get that that title. We'll try and, and see if we can track down a Maple Leafs inspired championship WWE style belt. And we got to come up with some sort of competition so we can pit ourselves against each other and compete for that title. But the, the the chance to wear that belt here live on the Locked On Leafs podcast. So if you have any ideas, any suggestions of the type of competitions we could do, uh, leave a comment down below and let us know. Uh, and then we'll we'll try and get that done for, uh, for this upcoming season. Fun little thing that we could do this season. All right. Uh, we'll be back with another episode tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.